We have fire. To the coal. Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill. And today, uh, we're right in the middle of a huge rainstorm. Uh, it's really raging outside. I'm uh, rained out of work. And uh, so I'm kind of sitting around and uh, I decided to uh, do a video on uh, how to make pine needle coil baskets and uh, got my helper right here can't make a coil basket without my uh, my trusty sidekick and uh, so anyways come here Niska so uh, this is my uh, my pet chihuahua this is Nishka all right go lay down I uh, been wanting to do a video on how to do the uh, the pine needle coil baskets for a while, and uh, today uh, just seemed like perfect time. I have a uh, I'm doing a chaga or not chaga uh, herbal decoction going on the stove right now, so I have to get up in a little bit and check that. And uh, so, anyways, uh, I'm going to make a uh, a small pine needle coil basket today. It's going to be a very small one for demonstration purposes. There's a couple over here that I've done uh, previously. And I left the edge raw here with the pine needles sticking out. And that's an option. You can always weave those in for a finished product. And there's two different ways to do your your stitching. Actually there's other more than just two different ways. Uh, I use two different personally. I keep things simple. I don't get fancy with stuff and I prefer to keep things uh, simple and to the point. But there's two different ways that I do the stitching personally where you can do the spiral on the inside or you can do the spiral on the outside. Whoop, there we go. And this is another little project that I did. So you can see the spiral. The continuous lines are on the inside on this one and they're on the outside on this one. I'm going to show you guys how to uh, how to achieve that. Uh, it, it's all about stitching either through the top or the bottom when you're running your your uh, your beading cord on these. But this is one shallow basket that I did last year and this little one here it's a little uh, container that I made and I also left the the edge raw here showing that it was made from pine needles I made a little lid for it and this is one single this is one single uh, pine needle inside here and I just served it with uh, beading thread just like you'd serve a bowstring and then stitched it on here in the center for a little little grab handle. And there's that stitching the continuous lines on the top here so it would match the stitching on the outside. And this is what the inside looks like. Try to get some light here. And I kind of fluted the top. And I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, well, I'll explain it anyways. I'm not going to actually flute anything today, but uh, these are labor intensive and time consuming to do. Uh, that's why I'm just going to do a very small basket today. Here's another one that I did last year. This one's deeper. There's that spiral. This one's pretty uh this one's pretty deep in here. It's about as big as my hand. These have a little bit of weight to them. 
and again the uh, continuous lines on the inside. You can do it either or. There's other methods uh, to doing this. These are just the uh, the personal methods that I use. And I kind of, when I brought the sides up on this, I brought it up and then started going inward. So it kind of gave it a little lip on here. And I didn't leave the edge raw on this. I wove that in. Here's where I terminated the weave right here. And this was the last loop that I put on the stitching. So the hardest part about starting these is getting your coil started here. This is where it all begins. I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Uh, freehand. You can use a tube. A lot of people use a tube, uh, a straw, or whatever to put the needles in to keep them, keep them together. Um, I don't. I just do it freehand, and I'm going to show you my particular method that I do. Uh, and my methods, of course, are not written in stone at all. There's several different ways of doing this. So uh, this is uh, just this is just how I personally do it. So, and if you get into doing these co uh, coil baskets, uh, you'll you'll start to develop your own uh, your own uh, techniques as time goes on. So these are the projects from last year, uh, and what I use for the thread, I use standard beading thread. I'm not even sure what size this is. I just picked it up at the store and it's labeled beading thread. I think you guys can see that there. It's pretty stout stuff. I mean, you're not going to break this. And there's a couple other ones. Uh, these I picked up at the store. This is made from hemp. You have different colors here. You have natural. Uh, this is kind of a hodgepodge mixture of colors here. And then uh, there's brown and black. And it says there's uh, 30 feet per color. I have two of those. I can't remember what I paid for them. It's been been a while, but these uh, this is hemp cordage if you want to go natural. Nice thing about doing these baskets is uh, there's very little outlay and cost. Uh, your pine needles are free, and they can be done with uh, they can be done with uh, short needled pine needles off of short needled pines. The only problem with that they're very difficult to work with, and it's much much easier to use uh, long needled pines. Uh, I harvested uh, pine needles uh, that were on the ground that were shed from a ponderosa pine. Ponderosa has some pretty long uh, pine needles. Uh, Pinus ponderosa does uh, Jeffrey pine, Pinus jeffreyi, and uh, also Canary Island pines have some very long needles, uh, Pinus canariensis. So what I have, uh, there's two different ways of doing this. You can use needles that are uh, pretty much freshly off the tree and they're still kind of greenish and they're not totally dry and they're going to be flexible and the main thing is starting that coil you really have to bend that over onto itself and if the needles are dry they're going to crack and break in half so if you use the I wouldn't harvest needles off of a pine but ones that are freshly uh, ones that are freshly uh, shed that still have some gr a little bit of greenery to them they're going to be a little more flexible what i do is i harvest ones that are brown not rotted if you see they have mold on them or whatever you don't want to use those uh <clears throat> but i collect them off the uh off the ground and i store them in bags i have several bags of uh of pine needles and when I get ready to do a basket, uh, I soak them in hot water. I have a kettle right here. Ah. And inside, I'm going to spill water here. You can see the needles. That's how long the needles are off of the Ponderosa. They're very long. They're probably, oh God, they're eight inches at least. 
8, 10 inches. The longer needles are so much easier to work with. And these have been soaking for a while, um, about probably 15 minutes. Hopefully they're going to be, they're going to be, uh, you just let them soak long enough to where they're pliable. In other words, you can bend them and they're not going to break on you. And that, that's the important part. Uh, if they crack on you, you can't do it. You can't do the basket. So I'm going to make a little mini basket today. I don't want to be uh, tied up on this project for a super long time today. Uh, so we're just going to, I'm going to do a, a little mini basket for you guys uh, to give you an idea of how to get the, get the coil started, the base, which is the, the, the critical part, and the uh, threading pattern, and uh, how, to, uh, how to introduce uh, pine needles into the coil as you as you go across you're going to start running out of the length of the needle and needles will have to be introduced in and i'm going to show you how to do all of that and, and how to do this freehand which is a traditional um traditional way of doing it of my native people um so what we're going to do is uh if you're in a hurry and looking for a short video, this video is not, I uh, just want to be forewarn you that this video is probably going to be at least an, an hour, hour and a half long. It's, it's going to be a long video. So uh, uh, it's an instructional video and I, I, those of you who have been following me for a while know I try to get as detailed as I can and provide as much information um, to the viewers. Uh, so I'm not going to rush my way through this. Again, it's going to be a small project, but uh, I, I want to try and provide as much information as possible for for all of you. Uh, this particular, you can see the individual coils here. That's a coil. Here's a coil. Here's a coil. Here's a coil. And if I remember correctly, I believe I used, uh, I think I used seven, five, six, seven needles in here, or clumps of needles. And the smaller the project, you can use a smaller amount of needles. Larger project, you can go with larger coils. And uh, so today, with the smaller project, I'm going to go ahead and select some needles here out of the pot. I'm going to give these a uh, give these a bend test here and make sure that they are pliable enough. Okay, it's bending. I don't hear any cracking. It seems like it should be okay. They've been soaking for about 20 minutes now. Oops, it broke. Hmm. Maybe I better let these guys... Uh, I'm going to give them about another 5 minutes soak in here. That one snapped, so it still hasn't... Uh, reconstituted from the water yet. I'm going to go ahead and pause this uh, for about five minutes and I need to go check an herbal decoction on the stove real quick and uh, give these uh, a few more minutes to soak and uh, I will be right back. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome back guys. All right. I think we're, uh, I think we're good to go. I've selected One, two, three, four, five bundles here. Five individual bundles. Now what you want to do with these, take a pair of scissors and these little nubs on the end, you want to snip those off. So just cut this off even. And cut it straight across here. I'm going to do it over the kettle so these pieces don't go all over the place. I'm indoors. And that's what we have. You get rid of little nubs on the end. So that's the end that attaches to the, uh, the, the branch of the pine tree. And these are the ends of the needles here. I gave these a bend test and it looked like they were doing pretty, pretty good. And the rest of them are uh, soaking as we speak. 
Okay, so what I have, I use a needle. It's a pretty good size needle here. Give you an idea how long the needle is. So if you're trying to select a needle. So from my fingertip, it's going all the way up to my second knuckle here. It's a pretty, uh, pretty decent size needle with a, a good size eye on it. What we're going to do is, and uh, this is the most critical part getting started. Once you get started, it kind of rolls along and it's just repetitious after that point. Take your bundle. I'm going to show you guys a nifty little knot that I that I use to wrap the ends of these to get them started. This knot has other uh, uses too, which I will cover in other videos. So hopefully you guys can see this. I have the needles here between my fingers, hold them together. I've taken the end of my thread. The other end contains the needle, which is on the floor. This is the uh, the tag end of the thread, and I've looped it over. Looped it over, so the loop's coming down to the end. You want to leave a tag end hanging out on the back side here of your loop. So we just made a loop over the top of this. Hopefully you guys can see this. If anybody has any questions, just hit me up in the comments and I'll try to walk you through it if you, you give this a shot and you're a little sketchy on how it's done. Okay, so I've laid the loop of thread down on here and I'm holding the ends under my thumb. I want the loop going over the end. This is the tag end here. I'm going to take this piece and we're going to start wrapping. It's a little unwieldy to deal with this. You want to make sure your loop is going all the way down to the end and just past the end of your bundle here. Just past the end here. I'm going to slide this down a little bit further so it's back a little bit. You want to go about uh, about an inch. We're going to wrap about an inch of this end here. We're, it's a small project so we don't need we don't need a large a long uh, end here wrapped. So just wrapping it over just like serving a bowstring. over here so you guys can see just wrapping it. I want to wrap it pretty tight. And you want to stop just before you get to the ragged ends here. So we have a nice tight wrap here holding this this coil together. Remember we still have our oh, got it all stuck in here. We still have our tag end here. Okay. That tag end we're gonna use in just a second. I'm gonna reach down and get the needle. Okay, we're gonna bring the needle through the loop. Bring it through the loop. Help. Not in your cordage. You want to make sure the loop is held up here. You don't want to get it snagged in this stuff on the end and hold your wrap here with your fingertip. 
so it doesn't come loose on you. Once you get it like that, you want to pinch that to hold it. You're going to reach back, grab your tag end here. This is our tag end. You're going to pull the tag end. You see the loop going in? See the loop? Pull it, it'll start pulling your line in. Pull it tight. Now what we have, we have a self-tightening compression knot on there. That knot can be used for other purposes. I'm going to do other videos for attaching things together. Bow drill tips, interchangeable bow drill tips uh, for fire making, hand drills. Uh, you can use that particular knot for uh, attaching uh, improvised uh, primitive drill bits to the end of a end of a, uh, a hand drill for drilling holes through uh, a piece of bone, wood, whatever, with it with a stone tip. I'll do videos on those this summer when I get up in the hills. Okay, so now, and this is tight. That won't that cinches down on itself, and uh, it won't come loose. So what we do at this point, we have this long tag in now. Take the scissors and get rid of that. That's out of our way. Take your cord, move your cord out of the way so you don't accidentally cut it. You have these uh, ragged ends. We want to get rid of those. We want to keep our project as neat as possible. So we're going to cut it pretty close to the end here. I'm going to do it over the kettle so I don't get bits everywhere. This is what we have. That is a self-tightening coil knot. Now to get this started, we're going to bend this over. Since it's a small project, we're going to start off. See, nothing cracks. So that's a good sign. That bent over, so it reconstituted. There's enough moisture in that those previously dry uh, needles. Gonna bend this over to get this started. Things get a little unwieldy here. And how some people do, they put a tube on here to hold this coil together. And if you want to do it that way, that's fine. You can get a straw, a little metal tube, whatever will will fit and hold these relatively snug. I just do it freehand, the, the, the traditional style. I just hold them. I come in, wrap this over. This is going to be the base of our coil, the, the, the very beginning of it. this over on the other side and when you do this be careful not to uh, skewer your skewer your fingers I'm gonna run I wrapped it and I'm running it through the coil here now right here there's a knot where I knotted the uh, the cordage to the uh, thing and this is why I have this rock right here on my lap you're probably wondering what that was for to push that through, I come down. And that just acts as a big thimble here. Now I've used plastic thimbles. If you're going to use a thimble, uh, it's going to be harder on your fingers. I would suggest using a metal thimble. I made the mistake you can use a plastic one time. And it worked for a while until the end of that needle. I had to force it through and it came right through the plastic uh, thimble right into my thumb or a finger rather. You don't want that, trust me. That hurt. Okay, so we ran, ran it through this coil, wrapped both of them together and then ran it through and when you run it through it's, 
it's tight. It tends to hold itself. That's a nice thing. And the nice thing with this beading thread, it, it tends to grip. So this is this is nice and tight. So now we're going to run this over over the top and onto the other side. So when we've done that. I'm going to wrap this around. Wrap it around. Wrap it around. Once we get and kind of keep everything pulled tight, and this is before worn, this is very rough on the fingers, uh, mainly because you're working with a uh, a wet material, pine needles, running this right through here, and I just pulled it through that time. You can kind of take the the needle and turn it sideways and. And pull it through so we're going to come through we're just tying this base together here once you get in give it a pull it'll cinch down and it's kind of elongated starting out so you want to kind of smush it a little bit kind of mold it that will round out as we as we go here Coming over the top, you'll see, uh, you'll be amazed at how fast this starts to uh, starts to take shape. So I'm going to go through the bottom coil here. Careful not to skewer my thumb. Getting that uh, knot through there is a bit of a struggle at times. You always want to keep everything flat. I'm gonna run this over. We got one loop around. Whoop, sorry about that. One loop I went over the I went over the top and then I went this way over the top and then I ran you build coil upon coil Going through that original wrap there, it's probably going to be a little difficult getting that knot through. There it goes. We'll keep everything kind of pinched together and pulled tight. It's the main thing, you just want to keep everything tight and snug. We're going to go over the top again and then run the needle through the center of the previous coil. Being careful not to impale the thumb. And this is the hard part, getting that knot through the previously tight coil. And the tighter your coils are, the harder it is to, to get it through there. There we go. Make sure this isn't, sometimes you want to go up here and snug your uh, knot on your needle. Because that has a tendency to work its way loose. So you just make sure that's there's a lot of a lot of little things at play here. Things can get a little uh definitely unwieldy.
that's basically all you all we're doing here you just go through and you loop it over one coil and once we get going I'm going to show you where to uh, the, the uh, threading pattern and how to get that going here we're still on the base here so just have to work our way through this This is what we have so far. This is what we have so far. This will be in the center of our the center of our uh, little project here. Native people would use yucca fibers. Senu was another popular cordage material for doing this and uh, worked uh, quite nicely over the top bring it in see now what now we're going on to this is the base this is the second coil here underneath. Second coil underneath, and now our third coil is going over the top. So we just loop over the top, bringing the thread from the bottom, it goes over the top, and the needle goes through the center. The center of that coil directly underneath. Pull it through, pull it tight. Bring your coil across, and our next spot will be right on the other side, on the other side of the coil where we're going to run the needle through. And we're going to be running out of needles here pretty quick. You'll notice, and I'm going to show you how to splice those in. Like I said, there's a there's a, a lot at play here at once, and it seems very difficult until you learn how to do it. It's like everything else. It just takes practice and just doing it. Um, you know, don't expect perfection the first time. Went through there and we're going to pull that tight. I like to snug it down nice and tight and the beading thread is rough on the fingers be warned so we started off you always want to remember your needle count so we're going to add and you always, it may, basically when you're when you're adding needles in you just want to keep this coil at about the same thickness and you can feel it you can eyeball it it doesn't have to be exact it's not it's not an exact science you, you just want to keep it more or less approximate so we're underneath here where'd you guys go I'm out of frame here here we go sorry about that got turned around I'm looking at the little screen on the side here and everything's backwards so we're gonna run this back over the top just like this we're going to run the thread through the needle through the center of the coil directly below it. There we go. You have to kind of muscle it through. That's why the rock's on my lap, just in case I hit a hit a spot that's a little hard to pull through. I can just put it down there and I can push the base of the needle through the coil. So there we go with another another coil tighten that down pull it tight see it's starting to take shape and see how it starts to round out now it's still elongated a little bit but it automatically on its own will uh, will round its way out it, it's it's interesting how that does does it on its own and go right through over the top again I was going to show you an alternate stitch pattern um, in this video but I think I'm going to refrain from doing that because 
this is meant to be a, an introduction video and I don't want to I don't want to complicate things and you just kind of when you're stitching keep your stitches you just eyeball it and keep them about roughly equal distance apart and again it doesn't have to be exact you can just look at it and eyeball it so we're kind of getting down here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss and I never throw remember we started out this is a five needle or five bundle project uh, so we're not going to go and put five needles in here and add and splice them in it's just like making primitive cordage the same principle because that would double the thickness of the coil okay so what I do is I just reach in my kettle as I'm getting down towards the end and I'll grab this is one bundle it's two needles on here but one bundle it's a two needle pine so I'll grab one bundle take the scissors cut the nub off of the end and when we splice these you're just going to take that and, and shove these two the one bundle that has two needles in here shove them right into the middle of your coil that you have going and so they wedge you got your your last loop of cordage here you want to just push it until it sticks in well, it went out the side there get it in the middle and push it back in here there it goes to where it goes inside this coil of cordage and that's going to hold it boom that's all there is to it we just lengthened remember this is where it was we we're running out now we just lengthened it okay so we'll run it for just a little bit and then we're going to add another one in and you just keep doing that now you have a nice the coil feels good feels really good through my fingers here that's all there is to it run this over bring this over the top and again we're going right through the center of our previous coil the one that we're overlapping you know our native people would make these baskets with such a tight weave that they would actually hold water my baskets here will hold water but it will seep uh, out after a period of time uh, but the uh, the the ingenuity and craftsmanship of, of of the old ways is absolutely astounding. We go over the top again, keeping things equidistant, and again, just eyeball it. Does not have to be exact. Through the coil, pull it through, and that piece cinches on. Let's kind of keep everything tight and give it a good pull. Good solid pull. Okay, now here's where things, as this trying to get over here and show you guys as this begins to take shape now we're going to start running into as we're adding coils here you can see how this is starting to round out and you can take it pinch it down a little bit the uh, the high ends to, to help in that matter kind of shape it as you go but now we're reaching hope you guys can see this now we're reaching the point where we're running into our last loops of cordage here. Loops of cordage from our last coil. 
Okay. So what we're going to do is, this is this is where the stitching pattern takes place. And I'm going to keep this very basic for you guys. Uh, I may do another video with more advanced uh, techniques, but again, as I as I indicated, this is a uh, an introductory video, so I'm going to keep things very basic here. So what we're doing is, when we reach our loops from our previous passes here, this loop, and I hope you guys can see this, this loop and this loop of cordage. You don't want to run your and we're going to run our loop over the top here as we're bringing the cordage from the bottom and, and over the top. Okay. We don't want to run the needle through on this side of the cordage. Make sure you guys can see this here. We don't run it through on this side of the cordage because when we pull, the string's going to migrate. It's going to pull this way inside the needles. We want to run it on the outside the direction that we're going if that makes sense the outside not this side because it'll pull back this way we want to run it on this side of this side of the cordage the direction that we're coiling in that way when we pull it's going to pull against this cordage that's already here this loop okay I hope that makes sense and that's also going to set up our stitching pattern, which we're going to get to in a little bit. I'm not going to get into that yet. Uh, that'll take shape. And then you'll kind of see it and go, oh, okay. So we're going to run it on the outside, the direction that we're going. So in other words, when you're, when you're, when you're coiling, you're running your thread. Don't do it on the back side. You never want to go back. Just remember, keep going forward. So you're going to go on the outside of this, the outside of this previous loops. So we're going to run it right through here. That way it tightens against itself. I hope that makes sense. If anybody, if you need clarification, just hit me up in the comments. I'll be happy to walk anybody through this. It'll start to make sense here in a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay, there's that piece, and we just pulled on the outside of the previous loop. And that way when we tighten it, it tightens against itself, and it makes for a very strong um, connection. So here we come up to the next, the next one. This is the one we just did here. Here's the next one. So we're not going to run it through on the back side here because it'll pull back this way. There's nothing to pull against for it to pull against. So we're going to put it right here through the out on the outside in front of it in the direction that we're coiling. We'll run this through. And this is where it gets repetitious because when we go when the next coil comes over the top, we'll be doing the same thing with the loops here. It just keeps building upon itself. It's just it's just repetitious. You keep adding needles to your bundle and it's a repetitious action. You just repeat it over and over until we get our radius built and then we can build our sides. I'm sure you got to build build from your flat base. So here we go again. I'm on the outside of that previous one in front of it and you pull, pull nice and tight, and it locks in. See, there's another one. This is going to start our, our spiral stitching pattern here. <clears throat> Coming over the top again from the bottom. And again, here's another loop waiting for us. Another, another, another piece of uh, cordage from the previous coil. We're going to go right in front of that cordage and run our needle through the coil. Remember, not on the back side, 
not where you came from. Always think, go forward. It's the easiest way to remember. There's that piece, and boom, tightens right down. You see the see the spiral starting. Just make sure everything is tight. Give it a nice pull, and everything. This is this is solid. You'd be amazed at how strong these baskets are. They're, they're really super strong when they get cinched down and you look through here you can see no daylight I mean this basket once it's done it'll hold water it'll seep through eventually but it will hold water it's kind of smooshing down the the high sides it's starting to take shape now this is our base and I think we'll make this might do this with the spiral on the inside. I kind of like the look of the spiral on the inside, so I think we'll use this as the inside, because I could always flip it and have the spiral on the outside, and this be the inside, but this is nice and clean. And a lot of times I'll look at this and say, see which side looks cleanest. And both sides actually look really good, so it could be either or, but I think I'll, I'll do this with the spiral on the inside. Uh, the same as uh, this. You see the spiral? That's what we're working on is our spiral. Here we go. From the bottom over the top again and right in front of that previous loop of cordage on the coil underneath it. We're running out of beading thread here, and I'm going to show you how to uh, how to deal with that issue here in a little bit. So there we go, nice and tight. Form it up a little bit. Just want to kind of make sure everything stays flat. Things can wander on you uh, if you're doing it freehand. So you just want to always you know just kind of pinch it make sure everything's nice and flat we get down here uh, where we need another needle I warned you this is going to be a long video I don't rush my way through instructions especially when it's when it's something that's fairly technical and I feel that short changes the viewer at the same time. That's what we're doing here. We're just adding these needles in. I'm pushing them in to the end here so they I push them in to where they they go right into that loop of cordage, my previous loop and that locks them in and holds them after they're in, give the cordage another pull. Give it a nice pull. Make sure everything stays nice and solid and tight. And again, we just start right back up with our pattern over the top from the bottom. Cordage over the top. And again, here's our, our previous loop. So we're going to go right in front of that. Always go forward, not back. And as you get these coils tight, ah, you really got to pull that, that knot from that needle through there. I mean, it has a tendency to really cinch on. You'd be very amazed. And I have some needles coming loose here.
so I'm going to run another through. I missed some needles at the bottom. So I'm going to run back through along that same piece of cordage and just double it, which you can do. There is nothing wrong with doing it that way. It's easy to miss something if you don't stay right on top of it. And again, same thing in front of the previous loop. Make sure your cordage goes up over the top of the coil. There we go. I had a little issue developing there, but it's good now. Do another loop and then I'm going to throw a little more uh, some more pine needles in the mix there into the coil. And this is how I do it. I just do it freehand. I just like the uh, I just like the primitive aspect. The you know the the fewer the fewer mechanical things that are involved. It just kind of breaks it down to its its basic level and. Uh, and before I cinch this knot all the way down, I'm going to add some more needles in. If I cinch it, it'll be harder to get them in there. It's a nice, nice long one here. This one's crazy. It's going to be at least 10, 11 inches long. Cut the end off. Nub. And uh, incorporate this into our coil. See, by leaving that loose, leaving that a little bit loose, this is the one I just added in right here. You can see the end of it right here. By leaving that loose, I can push those in. Now pinch it to hold everything together, and now snug it. Leaving it loose, it was it's a lot easier to get the uh, to add those uh, add those in there. And we're getting running out of beading cord here. Over the top, front of the previous coil. Ooh, pull it through. <clears throat> yeah, muscle it through. Make sure everything stays flat so it doesn't start creeping. Pull it tight and I'm going to have to add some more needles here because I'm uh, going to start running out here shortly. And you know your coils are nice and tight when you go to put the uh, needle through and you have to really force it you can just feel how tight the uh, the coils are you know you have you have everything snug down nicely so I'm gonna add some more uh, needles and then we're gonna tie this off and uh, I'll get some more cordage out here here's another really good Another really good needle. Cut the end off. This loop is intentionally left loose so I can add these needles in. There they are. Add it in and now make sure everything is straight and pull it down tight. Give it a nice pull. Just make sure everything's flat here. And I'm just about out of thread, beading thread. So what I'm gonna do is, and the way you deal with this, just 
bring this over the top and run it through where you were where, where uh, it was just ran through a second ago and that's a nice tight coil run it through see that you know your coils are tight when you really have to struggle to get that knot through and that's what you want a nice tight coil uh, will make a nice uh, nice tight coils and make a nice tight basket Okay, I just ran it through, pull it tight, that's all you have to do. The tightness of the coil will hold the thread. If you feel like you want a little tighter, uh, a little extra on there, just run it through twice. That'll secure it it'll compress in on itself pull it tight and cut you can go back and clean that up later put your project down, just had a needle came loose here I'll just have to stuff that back in here Come on now. There we go. So I ran it through twice, just looped it twice, pulled it tight, and uh, with the coil being as tight as it is, uh, it'll automatically uh, it'll automatically hold there. I'm going to strip off some more cordage and bring out around, oh, I don't know, two and a half, three foot. That way we won't have to, uh, it'll be a while before I have to uh, get any uh, fresh cordage. And this is why I use a uh, pretty good sized needle pretty good size uh, eyelet on it. It's just a lot uh, easier to get this started. That storm is crazy outside. It's just raging out there. Which is a good thing. And I just tie these with a fisherman's knot nothing crazy at all and again when you're beating just keep an eye on it they tend to loosen up okay so now we're back on our project here so what I do with this I'll run the needle through where I stopped where I left off where I fed that through twice and then terminated the thread I'm gonna run this down I leave a tag in out here so it doesn't slip through accidentally and now the needle is back underneath the project. Our cordage is back underneath. So I'm going to loop it over the top and continue exactly the way uh, we were going before. Right in front of the, the, uh, the next coil here. Right through the center of that coil in front of the uh, previous loop of uh, cordage. Pull it through and make sure that I'm not going to get knotted up here. Longer cordage, it likes to knot up. Come on now. There we go. Now you got to be careful 
pulling that too tight because it'll suck your tag in through. So we're going to uh, run a few here before we can tighten it and then we'll cut that and it will uh, it'll hold itself. And right now I need to add another bundle of needles. It's starting to get thin. As you get a feel for it, you'll, you'll be able to, to just feel with your, your hands that it's not uh, thick enough. So here's some more needles. And this loop here is loose. sure everything's flat and straight. And this again over the top and in front through the center of the previous coil in front of the cordage. Again, be careful not to skewer your finger. And, oh man, it's very strong. Actually, I should get my pair of pliers. Ah, I'm actually bending my needle here. I should probably go get my... Uh, pair of pliers so I don't screw this uh, needle up. There we go. Make sure it's flat. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and grab my uh, multi-tools because I'm actually bending, actually bending the top of that needle, pulling that through. I'm telling you, these, these things are very, very tight. You'd be amazed at how tight these, these needles will uh, compress down. I don't want to destroy my needles, so uh, I'm going to pause this momentarily, grab my little multi-tool so I can uh, pull that straight through instead of off to the side. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got a drink of water and everything. I'm. Uh, I don't want to run that needle. It's already starting to bend. So, with the uh, my little mini multi, little mini multi tool here, I can grasp the uh, needle and pull it straight through. Now I'm turning it sideways to give me leverage, and I'm popping it through, and it's. Uh, it's really working that over, and the knot's getting a little loose here, so I'm going to snug that up. Okay, so I'm going to do a few more coils on this, uh, and then I'm going to pause the camera because it gets repetitious at this point, and <clears throat> I'll go ahead and I'm, I'm going to increase the radius out. Uh, oh, I don't know, probably another inch all the way around so it'll be about three or four coils four, four coils maybe five coils and uh, then uh, I'll come back and I'm going to show you guys uh, how to build sides this is just going to be a little mini project today I'll show you guys how to build the sides up and uh, this is why I wanted the multi-tool there we go that's much easier without uh, destroying the needle. That's a nice needle. I don't want to ruin it. And you got to be careful that your cordage doesn't knot on you. <clears throat> Y'all come back. Uh, I'll pause the camera here in a little bit uh, so I can work on this. I don't want this video to turn into a two hour video. And 
bore the heck out of you guys here. We'll go ahead and add in uh, a little bit more needles here. I'll keep you guys with me for a while so you can get kind of get the gist and the feel for uh, for how this is done. I think it's important for you guys to get a feel for when to add pine needles add more needles to the bundle. See I just slid them right right inside there. Left that one loose, slide them in about an eighth of an inch. You don't want to go too far and have a big piece sticking out. And now it feels good. Now the coil feels about the thickness that it should. If you're doing bigger projects, if you're going to make a really big, I mean you can make any size project here, the cordage is a little kinked here so I'm letting the needle hang down so the uh, cord will untwist. It's good to do also in these so as you move it around and everything it will uh, it will start to twist on itself. And I'm not going to apologize if this video turns out to be really long because it is it is an instructional video. And there's really no fast way that I could go and, and show you guys how to do this. I'd rather have you watch and see how I make little adjustments to things and, and whatnot. This is really coming out nice. It's really freaking solid. So this is what we have so far. This is the top. You can see the spiral pattern with the cordage starting to take place. And that's just running your needle. Just keep leapfrogging it and going in front of the previous loop. That's all there is to it. It's just it's just repetitious, and you can see by adding the needles, we're continuing the coil. It's just like splicing, uh, uh, very similar to splicing primitive cordage. As you weave your primitive cordage, you, you're starting to get down towards the end. You you add material to it. I love this little mini, little mini uh, multi-tool. See a little knife and tools and everything. It's a little pocket set. It's a little Sheffield. It's not top of the line, but it's a pretty cool little setup. I've used Sheffield products. They're they're, they're pretty decent. As long as you don't abuse them, they're it's like everything else. They're they're not too bad. See, it's starting, starting to, uh, starting to round out now. So we're going to run another loop here, and I'm going to throw another little bunch of pine needles in again, and I add them uh, one at a time, just kind of keep everything rolling along. It's a tight coil. That's what we want though. Nice solid little project. I didn't cinch that real super tight, so I want to get some more in here. There's a nice big one. the nub off the end. It's just pretty much repetitious action and making sure that the uh, making sure that your uh, project 
So now that feels good again. Making sure your project uh, stays nice and clean. Just make sure it stays flat, kind of sight down while you're working on it. If you have to, just adjust things a little bit. It's starting to round out nicely now. We got a nice spiral pattern taking shape. Once it gets going, um, once it gets going, it, it starts to pick up speed to a certain extent. Uh, it's just the getting it started that's time consuming, getting that real tight little radius, that, that base started. Once you get that going and you start adding coils, it, it starts to move pretty good. Before I cinch it, I want to sight through, make sure it's flat, a little minor adjustment, and then give it a nice tight snug here. And the coil is so tight that once you pull it, the cordage doesn't back back out, it, it holds itself. It's good to let your needle hang too to untwist. The cordage has a way of twisting with these. I haven't poked my finger yet, so that's a good thing. And pull it through. Kind of adjust your cordage up so it's in a good spot and uh, in line with your spiral before you snug it. Now we have this tag end still floating around here from when we spliced the cordage. So now that we've added some coils to that, uh, and it's nice and uh, snug, I'm going to get that out of the way so I don't have to keep negotiating my way around it when I'm running the uh, coil in here. And I'm going to throw another bundle of pine needles in there. The ends off the nub and stuff them right underneath that last loop right here. Just incorporated them right in, and now that they're in there, I'll snug that down, and that locks them into place. The way I'm showing you here is the old, the old traditional way of doing this freehand. Um, aside from our native people, uh, I don't know too many people who do it freehand. Not that there's anything wrong with using a tube to hold all this together. Uh, I just uh, kind of a traditionalist, I guess. Now we're back around to where we terminated that last that last cord when we ran out. So we've gone all the way around the radius. Bring this up here. Kind of eyeball it a little bit, make sure it's in line, give it a little snug. Line up that coil, kind of flatten it a little bit, and give it a good pull. I've heard of people doing these with bank line, and I think bank line, I mean, you could use it, but I think it would be a little harder to get through these coils because it's covered with tar. It makes it a little grippy, a little sticky beading cordage looks works good. I'll probably do a, a video on uh, using uh, yucca fibers and go 100% primitive even though this is hemp cordage. I mean it, technically it's it's all natural. It would be nice to process fibers and do one that way.
now that I got that tag end out of there, now I'm not fighting my way around that. And placing your fingers on the back side of this when you pull it braces everything when you're pulling that cordage and then you can just really really pull that and sense that that cordage down works uh, really well that way it's another little uh, little tip for you guys you can see the spiral spirals really starting to take shapes looking nice and this thing's it's really really solid I mentioned earlier, you, you'd be amazed at how tough these these pine needle coil baskets are. Let me get this tangled here. There we go. You make little minor adjustments as you go. Just make sure everything's everything's tight and uh, in line. You can see how this is rounded out now. It started out elongated when we were working that base down, and. Uh, it's uh, it's starting to round out nicely. They they always do that automatically. It's really cool. Give it another pull. Make sure everything's cinched and nice and tight. And we're getting down towards the end of needles here. I'll go one more, and then I'm going to add one more loop here, and then I'm going to add. Uh, some more needles to the mix. I'm not going to pull that real tight. I'm going to get another uh, bundle of needles in here. Yeah, if any of uh, any of uh, you viewers have any questions whatsoever on how to do this, I'm here to help. And I think it's important to realize I've never charged for any of my instruction. Never have. I share my knowledge uh, freely and I'm not, I, you know, I grew, I was fortunate enough to grow up in the country. I grew up down in the creek bottoms and the fields and snaring and hunting and we had livestock and orchards and I worked as a ranch hand in my younger years on neighboring farms and ranches and that's how I grew up. I was very fortunate and so I grew up with nature and I I grew up, I hung out with a lot of older folks and uh, they passed on a lot of information uh, to me very fortunate um, and I've take, taken what I, I learned and I just learned a lot more throughout the years and uh, I'm a quarter uh, Native American uh, Comanche and uh, Miwok my mom is is half 
and her mother was full blood. She was born on the uh, Miwok Reservation here in uh, California. So it's in my blood and through family ties and different things I've, I've learned a lot of uh, a lot of very interesting a lot of very interesting information and skills and and uh, I don't know it all there's almost never a day or a week goes by that I don't learn something new that's that's the, the really neat thing about bushcrafting and these primitive techniques there there's so much to it you can spend an entire lifetime studying this stuff and uh, and still never learn it all I'll be a student and uh, I'm a student and always will be a student I've never charged anything for for any of the information I put out there another thing uh, you'll never find on my YouTube channel are commercials I don't think it's fair for my viewers to be forced to sit through commercials I mean we're, we're inundated with with commercials it's all over the place television and internet and radio and telling you what to buy and where to shop and who to like and who to hate and I mean it's just our psyches are just overloaded with it and that's not what I'm about and that's not what my channel's about and uh, I'm not going to monetize my channel I'm, I'm not in this to make money I, I, I'm self-employed I work I'm not rich by any stretch of the, the imagination and uh, I don't worship materialism or money. I make money, I pay my bills, and uh, and I feel, you know, if uh, if that's you know that, that's the best I can do, I'm fortunate to 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 be able to do that. And uh, I take very. Uh, take very spiritual outlook on on life and uh, money and materialism does not rule my life and it's not it's not who I am uh, I love nature a very very strong uh, very strong uh, spiritual connection with uh, with nature and it's getting stronger as I as I get older uh, it's very interesting it's very it's very uh, it's a wonderful journey I love crafting. Ever since I was a kid, I've always built things. I even made my own toys. I mean, back in my day, uh, we didn't have any of the stuff that the kids have nowadays. So oftentimes I would make my own toys. I used to build kites out of newspaper, scotch tape, and, and, uh, and small tree branches. And they flew great. They flew absolutely awesome. I used to make the standard kite-shaped, uh, diamond-shaped kites, and and whatnot, and uh, and they flew great. My mom was a little perturbed because I used to hit her up for uh, for sheets so I could tear the sheets and make tails. But uh, very, very interesting childhood. But uh, I love, I love bushcrafting. I love nature. Um, I follow a lot of native spirituality. I'm not religious. I am spiritual, and I follow a lot of uh, a lot of the native spirituality. That's what speaks to me. Native spiritual system. Uh, everything is spirit. Everything is sacred. Everything should be treated sacred. That's why I stress in my videos, on the wild edible videos, you know, always approach nature with respect and reverence. Um, it'll be rewarded. It comes back to you in positive ways. You know, don't go through and 
cut down plants and you know if you only need a little bit of a plant don't pull it all up by the roots and you know that's a living being uh, you know just take what you need you never want to get greedy nature will reward you but it can also punish you and if if you're walking a good a good walk with nature nature will provide what you need I can't tell you how many times I have been out in nature and things just come to me wild edibles and animals and or natural resources that you need and uh, very interesting I'm be doing uh, doing some foraging videos on how to properly forage and and uh, and pay respect for what you take sorry to start rambling here I know this uh, it wasn't a spir uh, a spiritual video but just felt led to share that with everybody But again, you won't find videos on my channel, uh, or uh, videos, videos you'll find on the channel. You you won't find commercials. No intention of ever adding uh, commercials, and I'm going to throw some more pine needles in here. So now that you guys, uh, you've seen. And again, I just threw it, slid those right inside the last loop there. Now the coil feels good. You just feel when it starts to get a little, little slim. Now that it's in there, I'm going to brace this back here and give it the old heave ho. Nice and tight. Now that you guys are, uh, have a good idea of how to do this here. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the camera and continue. I'm going to add probably another three or four coils to this. And I don't want to bore the heck out of you guys because uh, from here on out it just gets it starts to get repetitious. See the pieces sticking up here these are the ends of ones that we had added previously so everything kind of overlaps everything's not the same length it's just the same principle as primitive cordage you can find a primitive cordage video on my channel under uh, primitive yucca cordage I do a pretty did a pretty good video on uh, the two strand two strand wrap uh, reverse wrap uh, two strand reverse wrap uh, method Anybody's interested? Uh, show how to splice cordage and together and lengthen it out. And there's a lot of videos on the channel. I'm going to be adding a lot more. My schedule has opened up finally, and I'm going to be in the mountains a lot more this year. So I'll be doing a lot more videos on all types of different different things pertaining to bushcraft and some native spirituality videos and uh, traps and snares and wild edibles and primitive shelters and there'll be a lot of different ones upcoming. I'm really looking forward to this this year. It's going to be a great year. And again, right in front, now you can see that we're getting a little bit bigger. You see the spiral here. And with the cordage underneath, it comes over the top. Just to reiterate, now it's a little easier to see that it's getting bigger. It comes over the top. We're going in front of this cordage in front of the cordage here not behind in front same direction that we're coiling in right through the center of the coil underneath 
and in front of that previous piece of cordage. And it's just repetitious. You just keep repeating that action over and over and maintaining your the thickness of your coil bundle, which I feel is getting thin again, so I'm gonna have to uh, I'm not gonna tighten this down. all the way yet. I want some slack there to be able to get some uh, to add to that coil. And I just slide it. I just slide them right inside here. You can see how I'm doing that. It goes right inside. Left this one loose. And I pulled it back out. There's one went in and the other. So they, they just slide right inside that, right inside the loop here. That's all there is to it. Now it feels, uh, it feels pretty decent now. And you can see by continually adding, we're not running out of, out of needles. And just sight down your project here from time to time and make sure it's staying flat. If it isn't, just do little adjustments. Just push it. Push it down. Nice and tight. I'm going to go one more loop and add some more needles. So always want to kind of look at your uh, length too. If you're starting to run out of length you want to add more to it and I apologize about the length of this video guys but I, I don't know any other way to instruct and hurry through this is a very it's a very uh, involved process and it is time-consuming so unfortunately the videos this video is gonna be pretty long and I hope I hope some it, I hope it helps somebody out there and I would love to see, uh, to hear about your uh, projects. Anybody who gives this a try, or maybe somebody who already does this. Love to hear about, uh, love to hear about uh, the things you made, and uh, feel free to send some pictures. Love to see what you, uh, Love to see what you made with it, how well it worked out. Here we got a nice spiral going here. Now I'm going to bring this out. Probably another inch. This this is going to be a very small, very small basket. Check the time here. I don't want to be involved on this all day. 11:25. My stomach's telling me lunch is coming up. Until before I snug that all the way, I'm going to add some more. It's starting to feel like it's getting a little thin here. And that is, this is how you get it started. The uh, compression nut in the beginning, getting it started, which is in my opinion, it's, it's the hardest part. Once you get to this stage, it's it's not that bad, and you can see the the nice spiral we have going. It's all rounded out nicely. So I'm just going to keep adding coils. I'm going to go out probably another. Oh, I'll go out probably another three coils. I'm thinking it's going to be a very small little.
project just for demonstration purposes. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't want to be on this for another three or four hours. I mean, you can really put hours into this, depending on how big your, your project is. And uh, I just don't want to be involved in it that long today. Storms raging outside, and I can hear the rain coming down. And I'd rather just be a couch potato. Hole up on the couch, maybe take a nap. I'm gonna throw one more in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna pause. I'm going to pause the recording on this uh, video at this stage because uh, I've walked you guys up to this point and I think, I think you have a pretty good idea of, uh, of what's going on here. This, this is all the basics of it. And again, if anybody has any questions or you get stuck on something or whatever, just, just hit me up in the comments or... You can uh, you can email me direct at uh, Pale Horse Survival at yahoo.com. You'll you'll find the uh, email address in the credits, all lowercase. And uh, definitely don't hesitate to uh, don't hesitate to hit me up if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help and provide advice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this, and uh, I'm going to work on this for a little while. I'll probably take a lunch break, and I need to go check on my uh, uh, herbal decoction I got going on. So I'm kind of multitasking today. And uh, when I come back, I'll have the base done here. It should be about a, I don't know, about that big. About another three coils out, and then... The next thing I'm going to show you guys is we're going to start building the sides. So we're going to, instead of going outward, increasing the radius, I'm going to show you how we bring the sides up and we start building the sides of our basket. And we'll bring the sides up about, oh, I don't know, three or four coils up to give the basket some sides. And then we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you that and then uh, how, how to uh, achieve that. And then uh, we'll go ahead and wrap the video up. So. Everybody stay tuned. I shall return. Hello, welcome back. I uh still working on this here. Went ahead and uh took a break for a while and had lunch and the storm is still raging outside. Which is good. We need the water. I'm just about uh just about have the uh circumference The uh, circumference uh, about where I want it. I'm not going to do a very big basket. It's actually a little, probably a little bit bigger than what I was planning. Here's the, uh, here's what I have so far. Give you guys an idea what what I've been up to here. And it's just about big enough. We're going to start building the sides. And uh, as promised, I, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Let me get rid of these tag ends. I just spliced more, uh, more cordage in here. Nice long piece. It'll carry me for a while here. can see the nice uh, see the nice uh, spiral pattern with the stitching coming out pretty nice this thing's solid and has a great one thing when you're working with this it has a great pine uh, it's a pine smell almost like a pine sap because of the the resin content in the uh, the oils, the pine oil in the in the needles. So when you make these, they'll uh, they'll uh, impart that 
smell into uh, your home. So I'm going to do one more loop here and we'll add a few more needles in and then uh, we're going to start building up the sides here. throw some more needles in here. The bigger the circumference gets, the faster you will use up the length of your needles. So you're almost constantly, every loop that you add, you have to add more needles in. So it really starts to, uh, really starts to uh, use up material. And the bigger it gets, the faster it goes. When we were down here working on the the base, you had such a small area. That's the tedious. That's the tedious part. There is getting that that base going. Once the uh, once you get that base going, the rest of it uh, it starts to pick up speed. You actually spend more time adding pine needles to your project here to uh, maintain the length of your material out there, your working material. Yeah, I think we could start. Start working the sides up. Some more needles in here. Okay, so to build the sides, what you do is you slowly bring this coil instead of running the coil right on the edge here which increases the, the circumference you bring the coil up just a little bit at a time you don't want to go a lot because then it'll be it'll be kind of an abrupt change but bring it up about halfway about the 45 degree edge and then run your coil run your 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 uh cordage exactly the same way it's the same principle you don't change anything and then the next one you go bring it up a little just just a little bit further and you, what you want to do is say we bring it up on the 45 degree edge we want to go all the way around on the 45 degree edge here until we reach the point where we began our roll then we can bring it up a little bit further that way everything stays even in other words you don't want to start here and then keep rolling it up it's going to get very uneven if you do it that way so it's it's a cumulative effort you're you're building upon you're building upon each circumference isn't in, in other words so go ahead and uh let me snug this down here So this will roll this side up just a little, just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and you run the cordage exactly the same way. None of that changes. it's up on the edge hold it and then pull your cordage snug the cordage down advance to the next advance to the next cord and same same exact thing just go right in 
in front. Always, you're always advancing, always going forward. As, uh, as I discussed earlier, that gives your cordage something to, uh, to pull against. Otherwise, you're going to tear right through the, uh, the pine needles. Okay, so I've got to add needles in because we're, we're using up material fast here because of the greater circumference. So go ahead and throw some more needles in here. And the amount of needles you put in, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you just want to keep your uh, the uh, thickness of the coil roughly uniform. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. If you're off a little bit, it's no big deal. It's not a deal breaker. But you want to keep it fairly close. Again, same same exact principle. Just I just slid them right underneath that that loop there. Whoop! This guy just popped out. And when you put your needles in, put them in so they all go in the same. They're curved. See, so they all should be curving in the same direction. In other words, you don't want to put it in upside down and have things curving in opposite directions. That way, everything lays in there naturally has a natural flow to it. And when you make these, it should feel as though it's flowing. If it doesn't if it doesn't feel as though it's flowing, you're you're not doing something right. You shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to fight the material. It should everything should just lay in there nat in a natural direction and, and just go together. So we're going to put and again I'm eating up this material quick it's getting thin on me already here this bundle so I've got to throw some more needles in here here. I figured it would last for a while before I've got to splice another one in. leave this loose because again this is feeling thin got to add more to it pop that in bring it up here and snug it down to the next one. And 
And again, I'm gonna, before I snug that, I'm going to add some more needles. When I add the needles, I just put, I slide them in maybe a quarter of an inch. I don't want to go so far that they're going to curl up and make the uh, the project look rough. I mean, they do have a little bit of a rough look to them, but you don't have all these pieces sticking all over the place. And anything that's sticking out, uh, I mean, it's pretty clean. Anything that's sticking out when when the project is complete, you just take scissors and uh, just snip off those uh, those rough spots, just to tidy the uh, tidy the project up. And we're already getting already getting a, an edge there. We're already bringing that up. And I'll bring this up probably, oh, I don't know, three or four coils and uh, we'll wrap it up. And before I snug that loop, I'm gonna add Some more needles. to the next one. And I think I'll add some needles here. Keep everything uniform. And I'll add a little bit more here. And off to the next one. Some more needles to that.
Ooh. Well, I finally got myself. Doesn't look like I drew blood. Must mean I'm thick skinned. See all these pieces sticking out here? Those suck right down once you start to, once the cordage hits him and just kind of ties everything in. And again, I'm going to put some more needles in here, maintain that coil thickness. And now we've just about made a complete circuit around this. I'm back to where I started. And once again, not going to snug it down yet. Get some more needles in here. Yeah, this has a really pleasant really pleasant pine scent and now we've made one complete circuit well we will have as soon as I get this on here a needle coming out of here could feel it on my fingers. And that is one complete circuit. I'm going through that. I'm going through these needles fast. I'll throw some more in here. And you can kind of shape it as you go too. Sometimes you have to do a little shaping. Now that we have done a complete circuit around here and we're back to where we started, now we can roll it from a 45 up to a 90. In other words, we're going to go right on top now, right on top of this coil. And that way we can start building this up uh, vertically. Now you, you can, there are a couple different, a lot of different things you can do with this. You could remain on a 45 and build this outward at a 45 degree angle. So it's kind of dished in. Another idea. You roll it all the way up on a 90 and you're going to build it vertically and not at a 45. Uh, all depends what you want to use it for and you're limited by your imagination. I 
I've seen some pine needle projects, uh, there were bases. They come up and they go in and then they flute out and then the top is fluted. Uh, just like this one that I, I made, you can see how it's fluted. That's not exactly a 90 and then I fluted the, fluted the top end here. You see how it's fluted outward. I mean you make it however you want to make it and for whatever whatever project you're going to make it for. I mean there's no set rule here other than the you know the basic the basic technique. Uh but other than that, you know, roll with it and make it, you know, customize it and make it yours. Matter of fact, I think I'll build this on a 45. Kind of slanted outward that way. It just feels like uh, it just feels like that's the way this project's going to go. I could rock it up on a 90, but something's telling me to go with a 45, so that's the way it's that's the way it's going to go. Let them inside that loop here and pull it tight. It's the same exact, it's just repetitious, repetitious action. This, this is all this is. Once you get the basic, the basic technique down, it's, it's, uh, it's all pretty much just repetitious. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm going to roll that at a 45. That's just how it feels. We really had a huge storm. It's starting to... It sounds like it's starting to lighten up a little bit. It's, it's really dropped a lot of water. couple inches of rain. I don't know if the camera's picking up the wind. It's a good day for an indoor project. I'm going to pull that up. I'll pull this up to loosen it. I tightened it without putting needles in. And I really need to Put some in there. So I'll run, I don't know, a couple more coils around the circumference here and uh, to build this this edge up and uh, I'm going to call it good. Yeah, I wish I could have done a 20 minute video on this, but there's just no way. There's there's too much involved here to try and shortcut it. I figure, you know, anybody who's anybody who's genuinely interested in in learning this, they it would be they wouldn't mind sitting through a a longer video that's going to cover cover all aspects of it here a good in-depth tutorial you know instead of trying to cut corners and I just don't want to do that I'm going to go ahead and 
sneak another needle in here. I really like the spiral on the inside. It just looks really cool when you look into the, the container. And here's what we have so far. Man, this smells good. I harvested these needles uh, last year and uh, I better add a little more here pine trees tend to shed their needles in the winter time they're not deciduous but they get rid of the a lot of the the older needles so there's a lot of them that were coming down from the wind so I just went around picked up a bunch of them and I've got several bags paper bags of needles and they basically keep forever as long as they're dry just remember to soak them in some hot water for about a half an hour before you uh, you go to use them otherwise Otherwise, they're going to be uh, brittle, and they will break. And if they break, they're not—they're not, they're not going to work good for this uh, this purpose. Yeah, I started this channel. I kicked it around for about two years, three years, wanting to start a an instructional bushcraft channel that was different in a lot of ways from the rest, and uh, as a way of sharing knowledge and uh, also reaching out, and making contact with people uh, of a like mind and. Uh, finally took the plunge a little less than a year ago and uh, it's been going pretty good ran into some really cool people and uh, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun I'm excited to see where it's going to go I've got a squirrel out on my balcony I can hear him Hear him scratching around out there. Got food out there for him. Sometimes you have to mold these a little bit as you as you go along apologize the lighting's not the greatest in here there we go anything seems a little loose or it's a little lopsided you just just uh, mold it the way you want it and then lash it down with the uh, the cordage so if a coil is a little misshapen or whatever you can always do a little minor minor adjustments as you go and we need some more needles here
This really starts heating up the material. Yeah, I don't want to cut the camera and while I'm building this and then fade back in and I think it's people learn better if there's a visual representation. I know I do, I learn a lot better uh a lot better visually. Add some more needles here. a nice tight coil there. Add some more needles. I'm going to have to splice more cordage in here. I think this is a good place to terminate that and I won't have to add I won't add any needles on this one. I don't want this Cordage to loosen here. So I'm going to turn around and I'm going to feed it back through on the other side. I don't know if you can see the needle there. Bringing it through back on the other side of that piece of cordage right there. So I went through on the other side of this. Now I, I went to the outside, pulled it. I'm coming back in on the other side of that. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to cut this line, this piece of cordage, and when I give it just a little more friction in there to hold itself, I don't want this to loosen up here on this coil and have it come apart on me. That could pose a problem. I'll leave a tail on this until I get another couple loops just in case I have to put the needle on that and run it back through. God, that wind out there is crazy. It's got to be 60 mile an hour. This hemp cordage is really, uh, really good to work with. Ah, I'm gonna have to bend this eye of this needle back out. It, pressure that I've been exerting on this, pulling it through, it actually uh, 
actually bent that eye. It makes it a little rough to get the cordage started. There we go. Almost. All right. Okay. leave a, a good tag in sticking out here because uh, if you pull and it pops through if you pull and it pops through uh, you can be kind of screwed at that point this gives you a little safety net with that tag in sticking out so we just ran that down we'll put some pine needles in here And we're just about done here shortly. I'm gonna run probably one more coil around this and uh, we'll wrap it up. Appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. I sincerely hope this, uh, see this is why, you gotta be careful because when we pull on this, the tag end starts to, starts to suck in. You have to be real, Careful, I'm actually putting pressure on this with my thumb as I pull so I can snug that down. And once we get several, once we get a few more turns on this and I can cut the tag end off. That's just a little, uh, one of the little, uh, tricks that I learned on my own making these. So I've made that mistake before. Pulled on it and it popped through and I'm like, oh no. It screws up your whole stitch pattern. Not that they have to be perfect, but I like things to look pretty decent. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna make it, I want to do it halfway right. See how there's enough friction with uh, through the loops. that that tag end can be cut off, which I'll do so in a little bit. And with all the friction in there, it's not gonna pull. It's not gonna pull loose. Add a little bit more pine needles. I'm just gonna do another. I'm gonna run this coil around and terminate it over on the side, I think. I'll show you how to terminate it. It's very simple. I don't want to include that. I want this to be as comprehensive as possible. tutorial I'll throw 
one pine needle in there. There's a needle. Needles around here somewhere. Okay, so what we're going to do here, uh, this is how you terminate the project, and there's enough needles here to do that. So what we're going to do is, we're not going to add any more needles. Get rid of these tag ends, I got two tag ends from that splice, let me get them out of here. Uh, and this is how you terminate. You just don't add any more needles. And as you go and you wrap this in, this bundle gets thinner and thinner. So it just kind of fades in. In other words, you're not trying to lay down a big thick piece. It gets progressively thinner to the end and, and fades in. That's, that's, that's how you terminate your, your end. This is deep enough. I actually probably got more involved with this project today than I should have, but that's all right. I'm having fun. I finish up here, I'll be kicking back on the couch, enjoying a day of rest. So to terminate, you just perform the same actions. Just don't add any more needles. It's coming out really nice. It's a cute little basket. See how we're we're eating up the material. This is all we have left now. And that's all going to be blended into the top of this coil. Once it's on there, you'll uh, never see it. This beautiful coloration. Beautiful coloration. Some of the pine needles have a lot more resin in there, so I just kind of mix them in with the with the light. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. It's beautiful coloration here. One more loop here. I missed a pine needle sticking out here. So I'll stuff him inside the loop. I didn't miss anything here. And 
and you can see how those just just blended right in this one here is out of place so these are going to get trimmed and what I do with the cord I run the cord out through the outside back in and that's going to in other words it exited it exited here so I go just off to the side and I go back through and that's going to be right on the other side of right on the whoops right on the other side of that cord the spiral cord Snug it down and then go right over here in front of right in front just like you're doing the, your regular coiling progression always move forward as we discussed earlier I'm gonna run that back through so I'm looping this cord through several times through this coil and that's going to provide friction which will keep it from coming back out and I'm going back through going back through again pull it snug make sure everything looks good and then that can be cut off flush in here Now clean up and go around in any of these little pieces that are that are sticking out like that. You just go over it and give it a very very light haircut. Just don't cut any cords. Cut the cords, it's not good. Go over and just clean it up. That's all there is to it. So it's not all bristly, bristly looking. Just look it over. Inside, I've got a few here. That's looking good. These guys here can be cleaned. Now what I do, just like on this basket, I leave the little, that's where I terminated it. Just left a little, little raw edge there. I thought it gave it some character and I did the same thing on the, uh, there you go. The little basket here so I think what I'm going to do with this I'm going to do the same thing um, so here's what I have I'm going to cut these at an angle here so they just kind of flow with the uh, the edge much better And this is what we have. This is what we have. This is how it came out. Here's the bottom. That's where we started out. Nice tight weave, very clean. This one came out really nice. Proud of this. It's beautiful spiral in there. Goes the spiral goes all the way up on the sides. that my friends is uh, how you do pine needle coil baskets 
If anybody has any questions, uh, you need help, whatever, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, don't hesitate to hit me up. I'm always happy to to uh, be of assistance. And uh, if, just noticed a. There we go. Just had noticed a uh, rough piece sticking up in there. I'm always happy to be of assistance. Uh, so by all means, if you, you need any advice or, or help with anything, uh, feel free to uh, to hit me up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it for you. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And uh, as always, I will see you all very soon on the next one. Everybody have a great day or night, depending on where you're located. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.